to Paris for my first ever Poker Stars EPT event. The stars are out, Neymar is in the building, and we fire a bullet in event number one, the $1,100 freeze out. I get short stacked and get ace jack in preflop versus pocket kings, only to hit an ace on the river and double up. A few orbits and a table change later, we get it all in flush draw versus top set. Pick up more outs on the turn, only to leave empty handed by the river. Now time for what you guys came for. Ethan and I head over to Le Club Barriere for some $10, $20 blinds with a friendly $100 rake. Two things to note, it's 1020, but the $40 straddle is pretty much on the entire night. And the second thing, I did just say a $100 rake. This had to be one of the worst player appreciation casinos I've ever been. Not only are they raking a ton of money out of every pot, they're just super unfriendly and don't go out of their way to make sure you have a good experience. But enough of the negatives, you obviously came because of this title. I play an absolutely massive pot versus Ethan. Let's get right into it here. I look down at King-10 offsuit from the straddle. Ethan raises it up to $100 from the hijack. Small blind puts in the call and I decide to call as well. We're going three ways to the flop in a 300 euro pot, which comes seven, six, four with two spades. Small blind checks it over to me. I check it over to Ethan and he decides to check behind. When Ethan checks behind, that brings in the king of diamonds on the turn. Small blind checks it over to me for a second time, and now I do have top pair. I could be leading out into Ethan. However, he was the preflop aggressor, so he's still gonna have all the ace king, king queen, king jack, and if he doesn't, I'm gonna let him try to represent it. So I check it over to him for a second time. Unfortunately though, he decides to check behind, bringing in the king of clubs on the river, giving me three of a kind. When the action checks me for a third time, I'm gonna go for a two third pot size bet of 200 euros. Ethan gets out of the way, the small blind does as well. It's a bummer no one had pocket eights or pocket nines or could find a call. Still, taking down a 300 euro pot is pretty sweet. And we're moving right along to the next hand where I look down at king nine of clubs from the big blind. Ethan's in the cutoff and raises it up to $100 yet again. The small blind puts in the call and I'm gonna defend my big blind. I put in the call as well. We are going three ways to a flop which comes king nine four with two spades. Bang! <laughs> Flopping top pair sounds pretty cool with me. I check in flow over to Ethan and he decides to bet out for two thirds the size of the pot. 200 euros is the price of poker. I could go for a check raise here and put a lot of pressure on his pocket aces, ace king, king queen. Maybe a hand like ace five of spades as well. But instead, I look to just put in the call leading us off to the turn, which comes the 10 of clubs. Doesn't really change too much. I guess queen jack now gets there having a straight but I decide to check it over to Ethan for a second time and let him blast off into me into the $700 pot. And that's in fact what he decides to do. Now I'm not saying it's a punt just yet, I'm just saying he's blasting off. He's betting huge 700 euros into the $700 pot. I don't think that's a coincidence, he's a great player. He's gonna be balancing here, he's gonna polarize and make sure he's doing this with his strong hands like pocket kings, pocket aces, pocket nines, as well as a lot of bluffs like ace five of spades, ace three of spades. Maybe a hand like five, six, seven, eight, who knows? But he bets $700 and uh, I have king nine, which is top pair. Could be raising here, but it seems kind of weird raising into a pot size bet. So I decide just to put in the call and that leads us off to the river. A 2.1K Euro pot, say that three times fast. The river comes the six of clubs. I'm checking it over to Ethan for a third time. I wanna let him blast off with a lot of his missed hands like spades. So when I check it over to him, he decides to not slow down and check behind. Instead, he jams all in. Well, it's all in for my effective stack of 3,700 euros. Still, it's nearly a double pot over pet jam here on the river. It kinda puts me in a tough spot. Now you see my cards, I have two pair. Why am I not snap calling? Well, there's still a lot of strong hands that he could be betting here. He could have queen jack, pocket nines, pocket tens. Heck, he could even have pocket kings, that's a possibility, but 
the end of the day, I have two pair, it's Ethan, and I didn't come all the way to Paris to fold two pair. I decided to put in the call. He immediately says that I'm good, I'm not gonna slow roll him. I turn over the goods and he mucks his cards. Oh, he had to get the camera out. Now in the moment, trying to play it cool, not get too excited, I don't wanna rub anything in against a good friend, but still, that's a huge pot for me. In fact, it's the largest pot that Ethan and I have ever played together, 10,000 euro pot. That's pretty crazy, and although it sucks winning it against a good buddy, it still feels pretty great. We've nearly doubled our stack in the first two hands. We're gonna move right along into the next one where I look down at ace jack offsuit from middle position. I open it up to 70 euros, and Ethan in the big blind decides to put in the call. It seems like him and I are the only two people playing at the table just yet, and uh, we're going heads up in position to a flop, which is pretty groovy for us. It comes ace high. Ace three deuce all clubs. Additionally, I have the jack of clubs in my hand. When Ethan decides to check it over to me, it's a monotone board. Even though I have a pair, I have that jack of clubs in my hand, so I'm not really scared of any club on the Turner River. So I decide to check behind and see what the turn card brings in, and it's the six of hearts. Really shouldn't change too much unless Ethan has like four or five. So when he checks it over to me for a second time, I decide to go for value and bet out for 100 euros. He folds, we win, 2-0 against Ethan. Let's go. All right, cheers, cheers. Ethan, Ethan. Ethan. Behind you. <laughs> Almost two hours. Yeah. We decided to do a round of espresso martinis. And uh, yeah, Ethan's there. And if you look over my left shoulder, you'll see none other than Steven Song, who is the 2022 GPI Poker Player of the Year, an absolute crusher. And yeah, so it's definitely a fun table here. We've got Ethan and our buddy Steven moving right along into this next hand. We look down at Queen Nine of Diamonds. I'm in the big blind and Ethan opens it up to $100. I decided to put in the call. So just like that, our third hand of the night, all against Ethan. And uh, we're off to a flop, which comes king nine eight with one diamond. I have middle pair, I have a backdoor straight draw, backdoor flush draw. I check it over to Ethan and he's out for blood. He decides to immediately bet pot for 200 euros. I'm not folding, I'm gonna give him a chance to win some of that money back. Of course, I have some evil intentions. When the deuce of diamonds peels off on the turn, 600 euro pot, I check it over to Ethan. And now he goes for the old 150% size of the pot for 900 euros. If I'm calling the flop there and pick up additional outs on the turn, I can't go anywhere even though he's giving me an absolutely atrocious price to draw. But yeah, like I said, I can't fold. I put in one $1,000 chip, get $100 back, and see a red card on the river, but it's not the one we wanted to see, the five of hearts. Unfortunately, we're not able to suck out on Ethan. I check it over to him for a third time. Now he bets a cool 5,000 euros. Yes, he's going for that double pot size bet on the river. It's not an all in, I do have a good amount of chips thanks to that double up through him, but 5,000 euros is just not gonna fly with me. I have to fold my hand. It's unfortunate because I do in fact have a pair, but at this point he's representing a lot of strong hands. I'm just gonna have to let it go here. I wish a diamond, a nine, or a queen peeled off. Maybe I could have double up through him again. Oh well, the new score is Wolfgang two, Ethan one. If you guys are enjoying this video so far, take one second and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. All the way from Paris, France, let's freaking go. All right, moving right along, I look down at Queen Jack of Spades from the plus one position, and I decide to raise it up to $120 over a $40 straddle. The guy in the straddle goes by the name of John, and he decides to put in the call, leading us heads up in position to a flop. When the flop comes king nine deuce with one spade, we miss this board, but it's a pretty decent board coming king high for our range. Gonna have all those kings, ace, king, king, queen. Additionally, I could have pocket nine. So when John checks it over to me, I go for a standard C bet of a hundred euros and he goes for the old check raise to up to 410 euros. Now by the book, this might just be a fold right away, but any 10 gives me a straight, any queen or jack obviously gives me a pair and uh, any spade on the turn gives me some additional outs. So given the fact that I'm up money in this session and I don't wanna be a nit, don't wanna just fold the gutter and backdoor draws, I decided to put in the additional 310 euros in position. We're off to the turn card, which gives us those outs. It comes the deuce of spades. Let's freaking go. More outs for Wolfgang. The pot is 2290 and John decides to continue betting here for around half the size of it. Well, a little bit over that, he bets out for 1200 euros. 
Now, I did pick up additional outs here, but he's betting pretty strong. It appears that he does, in fact, have a hand like nines, maybe king, queen, king, jack. Just a strong hand here, so I think calling is not too great of a play. I either like folding or I like raising. Raising would be an absolutely baller move, trying to get him to fold a strong king x type hand. Unfortunately though, I did not find the baller move. I opt for option B and decide to muck my cards. Now you might be wondering why I decided to muck my cards. Well, a few reasons, one of which is the deuce of spades was nice because I pick up additional outs with that flush draw, but it does in fact pair the bottom card. So uh, you gotta be a little bit careful when drawing on a paired board. For instance, if he has pocket nines or pocket kings, I'm absolutely dead in this spot. No spade or no 10 would help me. So yeah, given the fact that it's a large bet and because the board is paired, I decide to relinquish my hand only to get shown the absolutely bad news. My queen jack high was good in this spot and he has queen seven of diamonds. So when I think I'm making a decent fold, John just shows me the goods and uh, shows that he was bluffing me and came to play. Right, a few hands to go here. I looked down at seven six suited, an absolute premium, and I decided to raise it up to $120, just trying to balance my range here. So when I raise it up to 120, I don't always have pocket tens, pocket jacks. I can also have seven six suited, and John decides to put in the call once again. He appears to have my number, and he wants to put pressure on me, and I see an absolutely dreamy flop of five four four with two diamonds. John checks it over to me as he should. Know your place, John. Uh, I decide to actually check behind here on this flop. The reason is this isn't exactly a great board for my entire range. For instance, all my ace, king, king, queen, uh, maybe jack 10 is just gonna completely whiff on this board. Sure, I'm gonna have pocket tens, pocket jacks, pocket queens, but I'm gonna decide to check behind here and make it look non-believable. When the three of diamonds comes in on the turn, that'd be a dream spot for us. So I check behind and we see a turn card which comes the ace of clubs. Although it's not a three, eight, or a diamond, I think this is actually a pretty great card. The reason is I'm gonna have all of those strong ace-x combos and he really shouldn't have the top portion of those ranges. So when he checks it over to me, I'm gonna start betting here and uh, just represent any ace or large pocket pair. I decide to bet out for 140 euros. If he calls me here, he could have a hand like pocket sevens, pocket eights, pocket nines. He could have a flush draw, although I do have two of those in my hand. Straight draws are also kind of hard to have because I block that as well. So I'm really putting him on a pocket pair if he decides to put in the call, which he does, which means we're gonna need a hit on the river or blast off large to get him to fold. And the river card does not help us. I had the too many outs syndrome and the 10 of spades peels off, no help to me whatsoever. John checks it over to me for a third time, which I think gives me the green light to blast off here. Seven high is definitely not winning this pot, but at the same time, I could probably get pocket eights, pocket nines to fold at this point, or maybe even a hand like king five suited, five six suited, who knows, but I decided to bet out pot for 550 euros. This puts John into the blender. He goes into the tank for a while. The longer and longer he thinks, the more and more I like this spot. It means he's in a tough decision, and usually when you think long, you think wrong. But not in this case though. John decides to slide the chips forward, indicating a call. His think long was definitely not wrong. It's correct, and he turns over king 10 offsuit. So calls me pretty with that, only to get there by the river. Absolutely great call there, John. I'm gonna have ASEX a large portion of the time, but he sniffs it out in this one and puts me on almost exactly what I have. He's gonna win that 1600 euro pot. Two hands to go here. I look down at the beautiful Jack nine of diamonds from the big blind. Steven is in the straddle for 40 euros and I decide to raise him up to 130. Why am I raising up to 130 instead of 120? I have no idea. Maybe subconsciously I was nervous going against the 2022 GPI player of the year. Right, I've given him his roses. $130 is the price of poker. He puts in the call and we are off to the flop. Heads up, out of position, which comes pretty decent. Ace, queen, three with two diamonds. I'm out of position against Steven the rest of the way, which is not a great spot to be in, but I do have a flush draw, backdoor straight draw. So I decide to bet out for 80 euros into the 270 euro pot. Steven immediately comes into the raise for 200 euros. And I'm just thinking about putting in the call. I'm not gonna be three betting. I'm not gonna be folding with my jack high diamond draw. So I decided to toss in two black chips and we are off to the turn, which comes the four of spades. Never gonna be leading out into Steven when he raises me on the flop. So I check it over to him and surprisingly, he decides to check behind. Now, what could he be raising me on the flop? Only the check behind on the turn. It's possible he has a hand like ace five, ace six, ace seven. 
They'd want to go for value in the flop with the flush draw out there, but then when called, I'm going to have a lot of strong hands as well, so maybe he decides to slow down. Other than that, it could be a lot of air, just trying to put pressure on me in the flop and see if I'm going to get out of there. Just find out where he's at and then check behind on the turn. Either way though, I'm done dissecting Steven's thought process. Who knows if that's even correct, and we're off to the river, which comes a board pairing four of clubs. Not exactly the best card for me. Maybe it's possibly as a hand like Queen Jack, Queen 10. So I definitely need to go for a bet here and get him to fold a lot of those weaker hands. Maybe I could even get him to fold a hand like Ace-5 if he thinks I'm a tight player. So I decided to bet out kind of small in relation to the size of the pot. 380 euros, I'm trying to make it look like value. Like I have a hand like Ace-10, Ace-Jack, even a hand like Ace-Queen. 380 euros is the price of poker. Steven goes into the tank for about 30 seconds before finding a fold. So you know I gotta show it to him. He's an absolutely great player, a crusher, and uh, seven times out of 10, he's gonna beat me in every hand we play. But just so happens, I gotta bluff through and I gotta show it. Look at that face. Ship that pot over to me, dealer. Yeah. Blind raise 80, blind raise 160, 320. He doesn't wanna do it because Ethan wouldn't do 640. All right, you guys heard me announcing all the straddles. Kind of a funny side piece of information here is the guy to Ethan's left. Well, I guess if you're in Ethan's spot, his exact right, he should have put out the $320 straddle, but he was kind of knitting it up. He was one of those Euro regs, and uh, yeah, he didn't put out the 320, and Ethan would have put the 640 out there, which was kind of tilting Ethan in the moment. Still, the 160 is out there, and the under the gun straddle decides to blind four bet to 320. Action comes back around to me in the hijack, and I look down at A6 offsuit. It's kind of a decent hand, kind of not, but against a bunch of players who have put a lot of money in dead, having an ace in my hand is definitely in the top half of cards I want to have. So I decided to come in for that five bet to 1,020 euros. I'm just trying to get everyone to fold. Take down an additional 510 euros. Don't want to see anyone put any more money in because A6 off just really isn't that good of a hand, unless you can see all five cards. But uh, my inner thoughts and prayers were answered. Everyone folds. Happy I put that 1,020 in there. We show it to the table, which rewards us with that 1,530 euro pot. When it's all said and done, I played the largest pot of my life against Ethan Rampage Poker. Played a bunch of other fun pots as well, and we rack up our chips and head over to the cage. All right, you guys, cashing out of one of the worst player appreciation casinos, if you can call that. I've ever played in my entire life. $100 rake, people smell. I can't apparently record at the end even though I have permission. And they won't even let friends get on the top of the list when that's their spot. But yeah, this guy made it a little bit better. He's the player appreciation. They should bring him out and just give money back to the players. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, buddy. No got into that game for five large, doubled through him. I got all the way up to almost 9,500, I believe, but then just got three bet to death, had to fold a bunch. To death. Rake to death. $100 pots, I mean, they add up. Got out for 58.88 and 50 cents. So a profit of that much, the Must US equivalent will be up here. Must be nice to win, huh? It feels pretty good, you know, covers that other bullet that I lost, but you know, what are you gonna do about it? If you guys like this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. I'm international now, a lot more tournaments coming your way because of this guy. Be sure to play bigger games and more tournaments. Let's see how that goes this year. Good luck on the felt, you guys. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace. I guess I could put this at the end as like a joke after a stressful like four days of confrontation. Thanks for watching to the end of my video. Click my head below to subscribe and stay in the loop. See you next time.